I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the Computer Curmudgeon Netcast. And this Netcast is very, very special. Ha! Ah, because it's the second time I've done this Netcast. This weekend. Now, today as I record this, it's a Sunday. I did my regular Netcast like I normally do on a Saturday morning, which was yesterday. But, ha <laughs> ha! I didn't have the sound on. See the little green light here? Little green light. It wasn't on. It is now. <laughs> you say, but Dr. Bill, why are you using a different microphone anyway? <sighs> well, I actually have a good reason. <laughs> sort of. The main reason is that... Uh, I got to playing around with my netcast and noticed that the audio was just a little not perfectly good. And I've got this really nice, expensive, cool, uh, what is it? Audio Technica ATW T701 system. Uh, yes. <laughs> What do you care? You don't care. The point is, let me get it back here on my little belt thingy. It's not a belt. It's a it's pants waist band thing. Anyway, I'm, I am a little bummed because I had issues. Okay, and because I had issues, I also forgot to get my uh, <laughs> my tablet. Ah, I'm going to just have to use the plain old regular web browser. That works, but it means I have to look over here to the side to get things rolling. You know what I'm saying? It's been one of those weekends. I'm just telling you. I got stuff going on at work. I got stuff going on here. I had to do the netcast twice. Eh, you don't care. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm even more of a computer curmudgeon than usual. Because I'm, eh, eh, get off my lawn. <laughs> kind of attitude, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> anyway, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon or drbill.tv. By the way, we use the blog, drbill.tv, as I have right here on the screen, as the source, the source of all computery knowledge. Not really. But the computery knowledge we're going to talk about for this week on the netcast. Now, here's the thing. My last netcast that I recorded yesterday that the sound wasn't recorded on, dude, one of the best netcasts I've ever done, and you didn't get to hear it. I didn't get to hear it because the silly microphone was not on. Ah! Anyway, so I'm just going to go over the news items of the week as I did on the last netcast, which you didn't get to hear. <sighs> I gotta get over that. <sighs> Cleansing breaths. <sighs> yes. Okay. So I'm looking over here, because <laughs> I, I have to, and I'm a tablet with me. <sighs> what looks like a MacBook Air, but isn't. This video of a MacBook look-alike from China has a 1.8 gigahertz processor runs Windows and looks pretty good it will sell for $240 US what cool install Linux and rock on <laughs> now I would like to actually get one because it looks really cool it's all aluminum and aluminum and aluminum and aluminum 
that's probably not a word either way. However you want to pronounce it, it's probably not a word. So I'll move on. Anyway, it looks like a MacBook Air and it looks cool. So what I'm thinking is install Ubuntu on it and it will be a wonderful laptop for surfing, surfing the interwebs. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. Can you blame me? I had to do the netcast twice. Yeesh. Now, next item for this week is the big news of the week. Well, one of the big news is the week. The other one I'll come up to here shortly. And that is the big news that people have been talking about all across the interwebs, and that is Google Drive. Google Drive. <laughs> I create my own sound effects. Anyway, Google Drive is like Dropbox. And by the way, I am awesomely into Dropbox. I love the Dropbox. And I recently got more space on Dropbox because here's a little kind of a secret thing. I, um, I don't know who's announced it, but you know, I found out that if you will connect your phone to Dropbox and upload your uh, videos from your phone and your photos from your phone, they'll give you more space for free in your Dropbox account. So I've got like 7.8 gig of free space in Dropbox now. Dude! So I'm pretty jazzed about Dropbox and I really, I mean Dropbox is awesome because on my Ubuntu laptop, I've got Dropbox. On my Windows 7 64-bit PC over here that I keep staring at to the side, that's got Dropbox. If I go to my phone, Android phone, it has Dropbox. If I go to church where I have a computer I use there, I've got my Dropbox there. I've got my Dropbox everywhere that I need it. And so I have it handy. And that's what makes it so awesome. So dude, Dropbox. But I'm talking about Google Drive. <laughs> And I got off on Dropbox. But at any rate, that's the whole point, is a lot of people are saying, well, am I going to really use Google Drive or am I just going to stay with Dropbox? Now, we'll say this. Uh, Google Drive does give you the ability to use Googly products. <laughs> Googly products. <laughs> you know, like the, uh, the documents and the spreadsheet and the Google Apps, right? You can use those products from Google in your Google Drive, and that's kind of handy. We'll talk more about that in a little while. Yes. But for now, the next big news of the week, actually, I'm going to wait on the news for that big news of the week. Oh, look, I have a light shining back there. You see it back there? <laughs> oh, see, looky right there. <laughs> I'll just move on. Anyway, <laughs> I know I'm easily distracted. <laughs> anyway, what was I going to say? I was going to, oh, I was going to tell you that Citrix Systems is our sponsor for this week, as usual, and they have an awesome product in GoToMeeting with HD Faces. The whole 16 by 9 aspect ratio is available on your uh, webcam if you have an HD webcam and boy do I have some things coming down the road I want to talk to you about HD webcams but that's for another show <laughs> so I'm not gonna go there I don't want to get distracted let's move on HD <laughs> in your webcam if you have one you can use it with go to meeting and you can go to your meetings and you can share and collaborate and transform the world with your collaboration through GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Just saying. So if you take advantage using this special offer right here, go to GoToMeeting, go to GoToMeeting.com and type in the special code word podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, then you'll get 30 days free trial of GoToMeeting. Awesome. So score yourself a free month of GoToMeeting. Telling you. All right. The big other big news of the week is, are you ready? Really? Are you ready? Now I've got a hair in my eyelash. You know how it tickles when that happens? And you see this hair sticking. It's just annoying. So that's what I'm telling you. So 
The other big news of the week, see, you thought I forgot. <laughs> the other big news of the week is that Precise Pangolin is out. What? <laughs> it's the new version of Ubuntu. 12.04 LTS. LTS stands for long-term support, which means they'll support it for a long time. <laughs> You probably guessed that, but I'm just confirming it, okay? Anyway, so here's the thing. If you are using Ubuntu, you need to upgrade, okay? So I upgraded my laptop, okay? It's now 12.04, the precise pangolin. I don't know how they come up with these code names. It's just odd. But anyway, and I upgraded my... You can barely see it. Let's see if I can get my finger just right. See my thumb right there in the corner? See that little black thing? That's the edge of the keyboard. And this black thing here, that's the computer. That is my Ubuntu server that I have here in my home serving out files throughout the internal network here. And so that's my file server. And so that is Ubuntu server. I upgraded that. And I also upgraded my netbook, my Acer netbook with Ubuntu Precise Pangolin 12.04. Dude. So I've like been on an upgrade frenzy. <laughs> and it's really cool. They've got all kinds of stuff in it. And not the least of which is it says Canonicals. It's hard to say Canonical for me. <laughs> Here's the thing it's Canon. Ickle. <laughs> Canonical. Canonical? It is of the canon. <laughs> anyway, that's the name of the company. And I have a hard time with it. So I'm just going to say those guys. <laughs> These guys say that in the official release announcement, they tout 12.04 LTS as a release for the enterprise desktop, highlighting things like OEM certification and the availability of enterprise-centric software from partners like VMware and Citrix. They have VMware View Client built in, well, not built in. Don't tell them I said they built it in, they didn't. They put it in the Ubuntu software library, and you can just download it and install it which I did, and the Citrix receiver so that you can use your Citrixy apps uh, through Ubuntu, which makes it much more enterprise ready, which is why I use it at work. It's awesome. So anyway, I had, I had a guy that I used to work with tell me, he says, you mean they let you run Ubuntu Linux on your work laptop? Dude, yes, because it's awesome and it's secure and it's me. <laughs> you know, I'm just a Linuxy guy. And actually, I support Red Hat Linux at work. So it makes sense since I'm a Linux dude that I can have Linux on my laptop. Just saying. Okay, next item. Kindle Fire is now over 50% of the Android market in the U.S. Dude. It's actually 54.4% of all U.S. Android tablets are Kindle Fires. Now, you know I love my Kindle Fire. It's like one of the best tech toys that I ever got. And it's awesome because it's color, and I could read my Star Trek books, and I've been reading a lot of cool Star Trek books. Matter of fact, there's a new one out right now. It just came out. It is the second Star Trek novel in the series on the Department of Temporal Investigations, which is the Star Trek Time Cops. <laughs> you know, you didn't know they had Star Trek Time Cops. Well, they do, and they're pretty neat guys. Just these guys, you know? <laughs> yeah, Hitchhiker's Reference. Anyway, so it's a good book, and I'm reading it, and I'm having fun with it on the Kindle Fire. Awesome. And apparently, they are raking in the market share with that particular tablet. Whoa! <laughs> uh, the Geek Software of the Week <laughs> snuck up on me again, as it is wont to do. The Geek Software of the Week this week is Produkey. Seems like between Canonical and Produkey, they're trying to make my mouth stretch into strange shapes. <laughs> but anyway, you say, what is Produkey? Produkey 
is a free piece of software that you can li click on the link, click on the link on the website or just go to this site and it's Nearsoft, N-I-R-S-O-F-T, Nearsoft. Not Mir is in the Soviet, former Soviet Republic uh, space thing, <laughs> Russian spaceship, not Mir. That was their space station, wasn't it? Mir was their space station, yes. Anyway, point is, Nearsoft is a company that produces this free product that allows you, and you're sitting there going, what does it do, what does it do? Okay, what it does is this. It allows you to get your product key back out of your registry for Windows and Office and stuff like that. So you can write it down and keep it if you ever need to reinstall. Dude, in case you've lost your product key. So it's pretty neat, Produ key. That's why they call it that. Bet you guessed that, didn't you? You're so smart. All of my viewers are so smart because they watch the doctor. Well, we can only hope. Anyway, <laughs> Google Drive. Next article here is an article I linked to where a guy is speculating, will Google Drive destroy Microsoft Office? <laughs> that would be nice. But Google Drive or no, you can use LibreOffice, LibreOffice right here on the screen, Go there, download LibreOffice, and you have a free Office suite, whether you have Google Drive or not. But his point is, if you use Google Drive, and you have the ability to use Google Apps anytime you want to open a, a document or a spreadsheet or whatever, then maybe you won't need Microsoft Office, and maybe it will just fade away into the, into the archives of computer history. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you say, Dr. Bill, boy, you are in a really nasty mood. Well, not nasty, just curmudgeonally. <sighs> you try having to do a program twice in the same weekend. Just get you all bent out of shape. Anyway, so, final item. <laughs> For the week, well, off the blog at least, I've got one other thing I want to do. The final item for the week is this. A guy, according to his YouTube post, built a Star Trek phaser. Now, I don't really think it's a real Star Trek phaser that he's invented here. Call me cynical, call me curmudgeonly, but, <laughs> I think he's just kind of having a little hoax here with us, doing one of those YouTubery things where he's trying to fake people out. And I challenge the Mythbusters to test this and see if they can build their own Star Trek phaser. Actually, I was talking to the Game Master about this. <laughs> And I said, you know, I can imagine Jamie and Adam really ramping this up and having some super powerful ray gun and calling it a Star Trek phaser. Dude. But anyway, the guy takes a black balloon and he shines what appears to be a laser light on it and it pops. Okay. I could take a magnifying glass in the sun with a black balloon and make it pop, okay? But I also kind of wonder if this is just not total video trickery anyway, okay? But one of my commenters here on the website basically said, I think it's a laser, not a phaser. Well, yeah, I agree. I think it's a hoax, but I'm kind of holding out hope, just kind of crossing the old fingers. <laughs> trying to get the fingers, fingers just don't want to cross very much because I don't cross them that, that often. You know, I'm just not a superstitionally oriented guy. So anyway, fingers crossed that it really is an actual phaser. That would be cool. And you could go around shooting down your black balloons all over the house. Anyway, you'd have to convince all your enemies to wear black so that it would work. <laughs> Which, you know, they're bad guys, right? So they'd be wearing black, so that would work. Okay, maybe, maybe he's got a direction to go there. Okay. Um, 
Here we have Geek Wisdom. Geek Wisdom. And as you know, I like to take the Geek Wisdom book and randomly, I'm not even going to look at it, randomly open it to a location and see what kind of geek wisdom we come up with. Here is the entry for this week. Actually, I had an entry that I did yesterday, but you couldn't hear it, so we're gonna do another one. Because it's random, so it didn't come up to the same one. You'll never know what the other one was. <laughs> That's actually kind of fun. Anyway, here it is. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. My life is my own. From number six on The Prisoner. Do you remember The Prisoner? Had this great big bubblegum balloon thingy that would chase the guy around and squish him down on the ground and keep him all bleh on his face. And, and, he, and they would say, be seeing ya. And when the guy would say, be seeing ya, it sounded creepy and, and weird. And it was like, Ugh. Anyway, I like that show. That was an odd show. I'm into odd. <laughs> okay, anyway, here's the write-up. When Patrick McGowan's number six angrily defies his captors with this litany of the seminal British secret agent series opening installment, he crystallizes everything we need know, to know about the battle of ideas, ideology, and identity that spans the show's all-too-brief run. The premise featured the dogged, dogmatic six, bedeviled at every turn in his attempts to escape from the mysterious captors and reclaim his identity. And it hinges on the idea that we're all boxed in by a system, whatever the system is, that controls us at every step. And any notions of breaking free from that box are themselves just one more level of control. <gasps> I sense a tin hat coming on. You knew it would. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, this makes for one big puzzle of positively Kafka-esque proportions. Although the prisoner goes to great lengths to hold any definitive answers at arm's length, the mere fact that McGowan's character clings so desperately to his individualism, yet is never more than a number to us, is ample testament to the ultimate futility of his struggle. Wow. Okay, so now we read the fine print. You remember the fine print is... It's very fine print, so I have to really strain to see it here. The free will versus, you know what? No, I don't have it with me. I started to say I have a magnifying glass, but I don't, so I'm just gonna have to strain it. <laughs> the free will versus determinism debate embodied by number six in The Prisoner in 1967 also lies at the heart of the character of the Cylon number six in Battlestar Galactica in 2005. Coincidence? We think not. See, tin foil hat time. Even number six. And number six is a conspiracy. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, <laughs> geek wisdom for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you actually got to hear this one. If this one didn't record, I'm going to put up a little sign on the website that says, Never mind, check back next week. <laughs> so there. So remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.